Hi everyone, welcome to Perfect Fit Closets. Today's webinar is covering a few basics today and above and beyond basics to advanced training. So once again, this is our weekly reoccurring webinar for Thursday, February 25th, held every Thursdays about advanced training at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern and 10 o'clock Pacific for one hour long. Today we'll be covering our wall modules, modules and when to use singles, corner modules, dividers, accessories, adding doors and when to add doors, islands and bench seating, changing door and drawer profiles, changing colors and changing accessory colors. So these were the number of items that a lot of our dealers had questions on this week. So we'll try to cover them all. And if not, we'll try to put them on for a next week's webinar session. As always, please always go into our dealer portal, click on our training section, click on PFC 2020 closet webinars. And in here we have a link called Perfect Fit 2020 Pass Webinars. All our past webinars are all recorded every single week. We've begun this session every fe uh, since February. And you can see all the videos right here in our dealer portal if you want to go back to one of our older webinars. All right, so let's get started here. I've got my 2020 catalog all set to go here with my perfect fit. I'm using the US catalog today. I've created a walk-in closet. I've got four elevations, elevation one, two, three, and four. I've added two windows. I've got my placement zones and we're gonna go ahead and get started here. If you do want some more information regarding how to set up walls and so forth, please go back to perhaps the February 16th webinar. We've got a fantastic webinar that indicates of how to create a reach-in closet and how to create walls, placement zones, and our basic tall modules and wall modules. Okay, I'll start off with elevation one. We're gonna talk about the differences between tall modules and wall modules. I'm gonna go ahead, double click on my categories here, go into my modules, and in my modules, I have stackable modules, wall modules, tall modules, tall corners, and so forth. So right now we're gonna be discussing tall modules and wall modules, and what are the differences. So tall modules, so tall modules, pretty self-explanatory. All the weight bearing load is right on top of the ground. I'm gonna left click tall module, I'm gonna drag it in. I see my magnet, go to my farthest left, let go of my mouse and another window appears. I'm gonna right click on the illustration so I can see it a little bit better. And the heights, I'm gonna keep at the default 83 and 15, 16 heights. I'll keep everything all default and I'm gonna make the opening one width to 24 inches wide for now. I'll click on okay and I'll drop it in. So this is a basic tall module, it sits on the ground. To adhere it to the back of the wall, all I need to go is go into my categories and in my parts. Underneath my part section, underneath our panel subcategory, shelving cap subcategory, and drawer subcategory, we have our cleats. Cleat connect to fixed shelf. This is the cleat that I use the most out of. I'm going to left click connect to fixed shelf, drag it in. I see my magnet and I'm going to drop it in to the very bottom of the top fixed shelf. So now I'm adhering the cleat and the module right onto the drywall. So this is a basic tall module. This is the most basic of all modules that we like to use. In our category section, I'm going to click on modules and click on wall module. I'm going to drag the wall module into place. I see my magnet. I'm going to let go of my mouse. And I'm going to right click on the illustration. The default for our wall modules are 47 and 3 8. So if I want to mimic something similar to what I currently have, I'm going to heighten the wall module. So let's go all the way to, instead of 83 and 15, 16, let's go to 73 and 7 eighths as an example. I'm gonna make the board nice and long. I'll keep my opening one width to 24 inches wide, the same as my tall module. Now, right now, for my bottom shelf, I have a bottom with a rod. I have three different options when I click on the drop down button. I have no bottom shelf, bottom shelf, and bottom shelf with a rod. I'm gonna click on bottom shelf, like so. I'm gonna click on okay and drop that in. So you can see the two differences between the tall module and the wall module. The tall module has all the weight bearing on the floor. Wall module, all the weight bearing is going to be situated on the actual wall rail system that's already in place. All wall module systems, we at Perfect Fit have already included the fasteners, including the mechanism and the covers for the wall hanging system and that's how it adheres right to the wall you do not need to do anything else 
Keep in mind, when you are doing the two modules, the tall modules are easy to install, less time, but a little bit more expensive because we're using more material. Wall module systems, like so, uses less material, but it will take your installer just a little bit more extra time so that they can actually plant it right onto the wall depending on what your install height is going to be. So those are the two differences between our tall module and our wall modules. One installs a little bit longer, one installs less, but one is more expensive. So at the end of the day, they're very relative. All right, moving on. The next question that I keep at, get asked is, what are the differences between our single modules? If we take a look in our category sections, we have stackable module single, wall module single, tall module single. So once again, whenever it says single, we are only filling in the gap okay so let's use these two as an example i'm going to drag this all the way to the corner here like so and i will drag this over we'll use these two existing modules okay so we have two modules and we have two different spaces here we have a space right here and a space right here we want to fill in this gap, and this is where the singles will come into place. You can use either or wall module single or tall module single. Let's use our tall module single first, for example. Okay, or so actually, let's use our wall module single. I'm going to fill in this gap here. Wall module single. I'm going to drag it into the area that I'd like. I see my magnet. I'm going to go to my farthest left. I'm going to let go of my mouse. A new window appears. We can keep it as our standard 47 and 3 eighths. And now I'm going to subtract the panel on the left. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to share it with the existing panel here. Okay. I'm going to click on OK and go to my farthest left and farthest right. And now I have a module that I've filled in the gap. Okay, let's do it again on this section here. I'm going to grab a tall module regular tall module i'm going to drag it go to my farthest left let go of my mouse right click on the item and this time i'm at, i'm going to put it to the left of the left of the tall module my apologies i'm going to make it 24 inches wide i'm going to subtract the right panel so i'm going to share it with this existing panel here click on okay and drop it in okay and i'm going to do one more here and i'm going to fill in the gap okay i'm going to go my farthest left let go of my mouse we'll keep this one at 12 inches click on okay drop it in okay now i've got a couple modules i'm going to fill in this gap right here this time i'm going to use a tall module single left click drag it in i see my magnet go to my farthest left let go of my mouse right click on the illustration now if you take a look i've already got a system on the left and a system on the right what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both panels. I don't need this at all. I only need the top and bottom. I'm going to click on OK. Go to my farthest left and farthest right. And now I've got a module that I've filled in as my gap. OK, so that's one option. So we have an option for our wall modules filling in the gaps using a wall module single. We have a tall module filling in a gap between two existing modules. Here is the third alternative, and I'll give you an example for our tall module. I'm gonna delete this current wall module single, delete this like so. The alternative to this, if you do not wanna fill this in with a tall module single, is I can grab individual parts. I know this will work is because the panels are fully drilled. This panel is still fully drilled, this panel is fully drilled, so I can make this work. I'm gonna go ahead now, into my part section. I'm gonna click on our categories and in our parts. And underneath our shelves, I'm gonna grab a regular shelf fixed, drag it into my program, my elevation view, let go of my mouse, and now I can bridge the gap. Same thing over here at the very bottom. Drop it in, that'll be my bottom shelf. And underneath my parts, I can go all the way, go down to toe kick, connect to fix shelf. Left click, drag it in, and I can drop in a three and three quarter inch toe kick. So those are your two different ways to create a gap filler, either individually create the parts, if you already have a left and right panel system, or create a tall module single or a wall module single. All right, moving on, 
The next section that we want to talk about is our quarter modules. That was a question that keeps being asked. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete these modules here. As indicated in our level one training, we primarily use the elevation view for majority of all our drag and drop items in our local browser. This instance, when I'm using my tall modules, I'm going to use the top view. I'm gonna create three different corner modules. One here, a second one here, and a third one here. Underneath my categories, I'm gonna click on our modules. I'm gonna click on our, our tall corner module. I'm going to left click and drag it into my top view and anywhere in this wall, it doesn't have to be exact, just anywhere in this section here. I'm gonna drop it in, I see my magnet and another dialog box appears. I'm gonna right click on the illustration so I can see it a bit better. Standard default is 83 and 15 sixteenths. I can go higher all the way to 107 and 7 eighths or I can go all the way down to 12 and an eighth. I'll keep it to the standard at 83 and 15 sixteenths. By default, all the module depths are gonna be in 14 inches deep. I'm gonna keep it at 14 inches deep and mimic the exact same module system that I have in place. Also by default, the module width is 28 inches. This is the minimum that we suggest. If you go smaller than 28 inches, look what happens to the module. If I shorten this down a little bit and make the width a little bit shorter from 28 to 20, you can see that it's gonna be very difficult for some, anybody to reach into the module system. So we recommend 28 inches is the minimum module width for a corner module. The maximum width for a, a tall corner module is going to be 36 inches, and that's what we recommend. I'll keep it at 36 inches. The next row that we have is panel corner wall, and it says right. What's different about our corner modules is that we have three different panels. We have a panel on the left, a panel on the right, but we also have a structurally stable panel in the middle. That is our third panel. And this is what this panel corner wall means. It's defaulted to the right, meaning that it's to the right of the actual module. If I click on this drop down, I can now change it, the panel corner wall to the left. And now you can see that the third panel in the back is now on the left hand side. There is no difference on structural stability between the left or the right. The reason why we put this into place is that if you wanted to make them symmetrical, and maybe you had two corner modules, one on each side of the room to make them symmetrical, one could be on the left and the other can be on the right. I'll keep this at my default to the right for now. Panel on left, fully drilled. We talked about this in level one training. You can always have them panel removed. You could have a fully drilled panel or a half drilled panel. I'll just keep everything all fully drilled for now. I do want an angled bottom shelf. I do want a top angled shelf and I do want a toe kick. We'll click on OK and drop it in. You can see now the tall corner module is setting in elevation one. And when I go to elevation number two, we can see the tall corner module here like so. The best thing to do for these tall corner angled modules is for shelving units. So what I would do to add shelves is I would go into my categories and in my parts. Under my parts, I'm gonna click on my shelves. Instead of clicking on a regular shelf fixed or a regular shelf adjustable, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to my corner shelf section. I have a right corner shelf fixed, left corner shelf fixed, and then the same thing for adjustables. I know that this is a right corner fixed, so I'm going to left click my right corner fixed, drag it into my tall corner module into my elevation view. I see my magnet, let go of my mouse. A new window will populate, right click on the illustration, and I see the general style is a angled shelf, and the shelf depth is 14 inches, which is what we want. We'll click on OK, and I can drag this fixed shelf into place. And then the same thing with our left corner or sorry, my right corner shelf adjustable, same concept, drag it in to my elevation view, see my magnet, let go of my mouse, right click on the illustration, I do want an angled shelf and 14 inches in depth, and again, I can drop it in. 
Anything in yellow is depicted as an adjustable shelf and anything depicted as blue is our fixed shelf. You cannot mix the left shelves with the right. You'll never make a mistake. If I grabbed a left corner shelf fixed, I'll drag it in. I see my magnet, let go of my mouse, right click on the image. I do want an angle shelf and I do want it 14 inches in depth. But take a look, you'll never make a mistake because it will never ever fit. So not, not a worry at all if you forget if it's left or right, the program will tell you if you are incorrect. I'm gonna click on escape on my keyboard to get out of this. And now let's go ahead and create our second corner module. Sherwin, while you're in parts on this corner module, yes. we have a question, do we need to add a, a cleat to this module? No, you do not need to eat, add a cleat, thank you very much. If we go back to our elevation view, we can see that the third panel is going to be your cleat that you can adhere it to the back wall. So please use this back panel as your cleats. If you would like to add a cleat, if you go underneath our parts and underneath cleats, you won't be able to properly drag this into place because we at Perfect Fit say that you do not need it. If you do want to add a cleat, I suggest that you put this onto the off screen. So if we go into our top view, I can go underneath my parts and all the way to the very bottom of our parts, I can click on filler standalone. I'm gonna drag a filler standalone into my off screen here, drop it in. I'm going to right click on this filler, go into my attributes. And what I can do is I can go into my variables. I'll make this 83 and 15 16 or I can make it a one piece and make this 95 inches long. So 95 and a quarter is the next increment. The width will make this three inches. And now I have got an extra filler. This can be used as a cleat and you can cut it to size. And hopefully that answers um, your question. All right, so now I have my next corner that we're gonna go ahead and talk about. So we've got an angled tall corner module. Let's use the second type of corner module. I'm gonna go back into my categories, my modules, and my tall corner module again. I'm going to left click, drag into place anywhere in this area. I see my magnet, I'm gonna let go of my mouse. And a new window di dialog box appears. Right click on the illustration. I'm gonna keep it the same at 83 and 15 16 Module width, I'm gonna make this one 36 inches, the same as my first corner module. This time I'll make my paddle corner wall to the left. I'll keep everything fully drilled. Now it says shelf bottom. Instead of a bottom angled shelf, I'm gonna click on the drop down button and now I'm gonna click on my bottom radius shelf. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the top shelf. Top angled shelf, click on the drop down button and now I'm gonna click on top radius shelf. So let's take a look at our existing module now. The panel is on the left and now I have a radial corner. We'll click on okay. And that gets dropped into place. Let's go back to our elevation view and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll just add in one corner shelf, go to my categories, parts, shelves, scroll down below and find your left corner shelf fixed. Drag that into place. I see my magnet, let go of my mouse. Now, instead of saying angled shelf, I'll click on the drop down button and I'll click on radius shelf. We'll click on okay and drop it in. So now I have a radial corner shelving unit. Now, my very last but not least, we'll click on my third option, which is gonna be the most popular by far and the least expensive. I'm gonna click on my elevation three and four for this application. So elevation three, I'm gonna grab a tall module, go back into my categories, my modules and find my tall module. So regular tall module, drag it into place. I see my magnet, go to my farthest left, let go of my mouse. And I'm gonna right click on the illustration. I'm gonna make this one 36 inches wide. Click on okay and drop it into my farthest right wall. I'm gonna populate this as a double hang as my example. Go into my categories, parts, shelves and grab a fixed shelf. This is all covered underneath our basic training on every Tuesdays, or you can also take a look at this in our webinar past sections. 
I'm going to click on our categories, go to my accessories, rods, and I'm going to just throw in a closet rod like so, and another closet rod right here. And I'll throw in a cleat as my example. So this is a standard double hang system. And then I can move the middle thick shelf and the middle uh, hanging rod up and down, depending on how tall the client is. And I can also center this. So right now I'm just guesstimating. On elevation four, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Go to my categories, modules, and grab another tall module. I see my magnet, go to my farthest left, let go of my mouse. I'm going to right click on the illustration and I'm going to make this one 36 inches wide. I'm going to make everything fully drilled, click on OK, and I will drop it into my farthest left. And we'll do the exact same thing parts, shelves, grab a fixed shelf. I'm going to mimic the exact same thing I had in my elevation three. Go into my parts, I've got my cleats. And again, go into my categories, accessories, and rods. Closet rod, drag it in, and I'm going to make the exact same double hang as I did in elevation three. Now let's take a look at this example. I'm going to click on the presentation tab at the very top and click on my perspective view. All right, so here's my perspective view. Let's take a look at our elevation three and four. So elevation three and four, this is a common mistake, which a lot, a lot of dealers will do. They will butt in on my first module that I built against the wall. The second module that I built on elevation four, they'll butt it up this left panel as far left as possible. Well, if you take a look a little closely here, it's going to be very difficult for your clients to access the hanging rods here and here because the, the hanging rod is going to be touching the back panel here. We need to give a little bit of clearance for the end user so they can access the back of their hanging rods. We recommend a minimum of 28 inch variance. Right now, I have 14 inches plus eight. So right now, I don't have a lot of room. What I would like to do is I would like to get a 28 clearance, 28 inch clearance between the left wall and this left panel on elevation four. I'm going to left click on this module, drag it over, and on my wall placement on the left hand side here, I'm gonna hit 28 inches, hit enter, and now I have a 28 inch variance between my left and my right. It looks like I gotta go up and down a bit. So now I have a 28 inch clearance between this left panel and the left wall. This will suffice, and now your client has got sufficient variance and room so they can access the back of the back of the hanging rods. Okay, so let's review this one more time and see what it looks like. I'm going to click on the presentation perspective view, and let's look at the top view. All right, so I have three different options for my corners. The first option here is our angled shelving unit. This is great for very large master walk-in closets. They have plenty of the space. They want the shelving unit because they have knickknacks or a whole bunch of sweaters and items they want to store. And this is a great option. But this is the most expensive because you're using the most amount of material. Option two is our tall corner radial shelving unit. This is a tad bit cheaper, but just as expensive as option number one, because we, we have a lot of waste, because we still have to cut this amount of, of wood material. So this is great. Option number two is great for those items that have a walk-in closet, but maybe it's a little bit narrow. Maybe they don't have a lot of room, but they still like the idea of a radial corner shelf. So that's kind of what I would recommend. Option number two, or if it's simply if your client just likes the look of it, that's fine as well. The least expensive option is going to be option number three, where you could have shelves or hanging rods. It doesn't matter what you have, what you need. Oops, my apologies. Looks like here we just did an auto save. So option number three is going to be your best bet for those items that 
regardless of what the application is, regardless of what you want to input, either a double hang, a long hang, shelves, this is the most cost effective corner module system. Now, adding to this corner module system, a question that I get asked is, can I join them together so it looks like a corner? Yes, you can. I'm going to get out of here. Now, I can add a bridge shelf at the very top to join them together. Underneath my categories, parts, and shelves, I can scroll all the way down to bridge shelves. Bridge shelf cut to size. I'm going to drag it in. I see my magnet. Let go of my mouse. And the 2020 program now has to try to find the area. This is a common mistake which everybody gets incorrectly wrong. So I'm trying to find this area here and 2020 is trying to find the area. So I'm going to click on escape and I'll show you a tip and trick of how to create this bridge shelf. There are two ways. I'm going to use my top view. On my top view, a tip is to see the entirety of the wall system. So I'm going to zoom out as far as I can so I can see everything on my top view. Once I see everything on my top view, I'm going to try again, bridge shelf, fix, connect and cut to size, drag it in to my area. I can see my plus button. I'm gonna left click once. And now you can see my bridge shelf has now connected between our elevation three and elevation four. Let's look at our elevation three and four a little bit closer in depth. You can see that the bridge shelf is now connected. I know that this section is 14 inches wide. I'm going to right click on this bridge shelf and let's go into properties and go into my attributes. If I go into attributes, I can go into variables. I know that the width is 14 inches wide, but it says cut to site addition, three inches. So what that means is we are gonna produce this panel at 17 inches long. And your installer is gonna cut this bridge shelf to size on site. And this is gonna be one of the very last components that he or she is going to be installing. The reason why it's cut to sides is that we know that walls are never truly straight or perfect. It's never plumb. You could have a longer bridge or a shorter bridge when you finally put your module systems in place. So this is why we have a bridge shelf cut to size. And we always want to have uh, an extra site addition to the panels. Now, if you do this, you will have to recam the shelves. So let's go ahead into our dealer portal for a moment. And let's go into training and installation. And underneath training and installation, I'm gonna go ahead and install in cam locks. So just wanted to show everybody what a fixed shelf will look like for those people that don't know what it looks like. I'm gonna click on this placing caps on a fixed shelf as an example. So I'm gonna use this as an example right now. So this is a fixed shelf. Every fixed shelf will have four board holes already done in our production facility. This is a board, fixed shelf. We have pre-drilled a hole here and pre-drilled a hole here. And then there's one obviously on the, this side here and one here, it's off screen. So what your installer will have to do is they're gonna have to cut the board and then re-bore those hole, holes. So you can re the system manually but I highly suggest and recommend to buy a cam jig through Hayfla. So that way it's a one-time purchase and it will help your installer be a little bit faster on site. If I exit out of this screen here, I'm gonna go into my dealer portal, go into my products and underneath my products tab, go all the way down to job aids and fasteners. Underneath job aids and fasteners, I'm gonna click on my tools. Underneath my tools, I can see that I could purchase this Rayfex installer kit, item number 001.25.639. This is the stencil, this is the depth gauge, the actual drill, a stop ring, and an Allen key. The cost on this ranges depending if you're in Canada or the United States, but it's a great tool to have, it's a great stencil to have, and this will enable your installer to recam any line boring holes for fixed shelves. 
All right, so we're going to go back. All right, next topic that we're going to discuss is going to be dividers. Let's go into our elevation one with our existing modules. Let's use this middle module here. We have two middle modules. I'm going to throw in another cleat here, and we'll use these two modules here, one and two. I'm going to put in underneath my shelves, I'm going to put in a bunch of fixed shelves as our example. And we're going to pretend we're going to make shoe cubbies for this. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of cubbies. Now you can do this depending on the application, whatever you'd like. You can make it for shoe cubbies. You can make it for pantries so that you can actually make dividers and slats, however tall you'd like it, your choice. So I've got a whole bunch of fixed shelves. If I go underneath our parts, I can click on our panels. In our panel list, I've got my panel on the left, wall panels. Below, I have dividers. I have a divider left, right, full, and no drill. I'm going to click on dividers, no drill. All this is is just a divider between a fixed shelf, between two fixed shelves, my apologies. If I click on dividers, no drill, I can drag it into place here into one of my openings, I see my magnet. I'm gonna let go of my mouse. Right click on the image so I can see it a bit better. The dialog box says number of openings. I currently have two openings. If I have two openings, I'll only have one divider. I'll click on okay. Give my program a second and I can drop it in. So now I have an equal amount. I have a divider and I have two equal cubbies. Let's do that again. Categories parts, panels. At the very bottom, I have dividers, no drill, meaning there's no drilled holes on there as an example, or I could do a fully drilled divider. It's really depending on the application. I'm going to click on no drill again, drag it into my application. Let's go into this section here. I see my magnet, let go of my mouse. Number of openings, two. We'll click on OK. And drop that in. Now for the second bottom, Sorry, my apologies. Underneath these two, let's do that one more time. Dividers, no drill. Instead of the number of openings to two openings, I'm going to now click on the drop down button and click on three openings. We'll click on OK. We'll go into this opening here where my mouse is. I'll give my program a minute to think. We'll click on OK. And now I have three equal openings. Let's do it again. Dividers, no drill. Drag it in. I see my magnet. Let go of my mouse. Instead of three openings, now let's create four openings. So now I have three dividers. We'll click on OK. We'll point my mouse to where I want it to be. Let the program think. And it looks like here it's trying to think here. We'll give that program a second. And it looks like here, I think my space is going to be too small for that. Oh, and it situated here on the, my farthest left. But, it, oh, there you go. Now it's working. I left click there, that's where I want it to be. And now I have four equal openings with three dividers. On the installation purposes, how we're gonna do that, you can do that several different ways. You can screw from the very top of the fixed shelf or the very bottom of the fixed shelf, pre-drill using a uh, drill bit and screw in from the very top or the bottom. Your choice, or you can use L brackets, or you can use wood glue. Really depends on the installer and the application on how you want to adhere it between the two fixed shelves. So that is our basic dividers of what you'd like to do. People have been wanting to use this in their pantries, so you can put down your shelves or anything long, such as um, your knickknacks and plates and so forth. Or you can use this as your shoe cubbies. So again, depending on the application, that's how dividers work. Next is accessories here. We're going to talk about is accessories here. So the only question that I had about accessories was how do we add accessories and how to change colors on accessories. If we look in our dealer portal, we can go into our products, go into our accessories, and into our closet accessories, we know on our spec sheet. So I'm going to click on our, our valet rods, for example. In our valet rods, we have three different colors. We have our chrome valet rod, matte aluminum valet rod, and oil rub bronze valet rod. 
in 2020, whenever we drag and drop any item, if we drag any module system, any shelving system or wooden core material, it's all gonna be situated in white as our defaults. If we drag and drop any closet rods, it's gonna be our oval chrome rod. If we drag and drop any accessories, they're all going to be in polished chrome. So if you do wanna change the colors, this is how you do it. So first let's drag and drop a couple accessories. Go to my categories, accessories, and let's go into our pullouts. Let's grab a valet rod. Valet rod right, we're gonna drop it in. I see my valet rod. I'm gonna right click on my valet rod and I'm gonna go into my features and options. Features and options is where you change colors, profiles, and so forth. I know that's been selected because one, that's highlighted in green. And two, if I scroll on my top window, I know that's been selected, valet rod. The bottom box, accessory finish. The option code is PC, meaning that the default is polished chrome. I can easily click on the drop down button and select matte aluminum or dark oil rub bronze. Or I can select it here on the right hand item. I can click on dark oil rub bronze as an example. We'll click on OK. I can click on my perspective view. And I can zoom in and I can see that my valet rod is now in oil rub bronze. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. So once again, always refer to our product page and into our accessories to find out the exact specs on every single item and the exact colors that we do carry in our catalog. Another tip that I have is opening the accessories. I know this one gets asked once a week. If I click on my perspective view, I'll zoom into my valet rod. If you wanna showcase your 3D rendering so that you can open up your items, you can easily right click on the on the image that you would like to open up. So I'm gonna right click on this valley rod. I'm gonna click on attributes. That populates another dialog box. Underneath my variables, I have this item, this row called open rod. I'm going to left click and check box this. Click on apply and okay. This will take me back to my 3D render. And you can see that my valet rod is fully extended. This will apply to drawer boxes, tilt out baskets, and anything that moves, such as your pull up mirrors and so forth. Okay. Yes. Uh, a question that everybody had was pant racks. Yes, that does apply to pant racks as well. So let's go ahead and grab a pant rack. And I'll show you that illustration as well. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these here and we'll use this as our pant rack. So I'm gonna put in a pant rack here. As always, if we take a look at our accessory page, the magic numbers for our accessories are 18, 24, and 30. Those are our magic numbers, such as our tilt up laundry baskets or our pull up pantry racks. So we have 18, 24, and 30 as our magic numbers. With our catalog, whenever we give a dimension of a width opening, we're always indicating the inside width opening. If I go back to my page, I can see that this module here is exactly 24 inches inside opening. So when we're talking about our magic numbers, or if we talk about any opening numbers, we're always talking about the inside openings. I do know that there's different AutoCAD programs out there and different closet programs, but they use the outside opening. So the outside opening that I just clicked on was 25 and a half. And some programs, the older programs, will have the dimension from the middle of each panel to the middle of the next panel. So once again, we do not use the outside opening widths. We use the inside opening widths as our measure. This module is 24 inches wide inside opening. 
I know that's going to work for our pullout pant rack. I'm going to click on our accessories, our pullouts, and scroll all the way down to our Synergy Collection pant rack. I'm going to left click, drag it into my module. I see my magnet. I'm going to let go of my mouse and drop in my pant rack. I can now go into my perspective view. And that will now populate. And let's zoom into our pant rack like so. So the pant rack is now situated, again, all in polished chrome because that is our default whenever we drag and drop our items. I'm going to right click on the pant rack. I'm going to click on my attributes and go into my variables and click on open item with accessory. I'm going to click on the box, check mark it. I can see the illustration on the left. It is now fully extended. We'll click on apply and OK. We'll let the render do its work. And you can see from the actual perspective view, the pant rack is now fully pulled out, fully extended. Now with Perfect Fit Closets in 2020, we love using the 2020 software program because it can do these features. It can do these pullouts. This will make your 3D rendering a lot more better. The curb appeal is more fantastic and this will help sell your closet systems and finalize. 3D renders are a lot better than any 2D renders. So I highly recommend to always spend a couple extra minutes putting in extra items into your 3D rendering so the curb appeal is just a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna keep moving on now. Next is gonna be adding doors and when to add doors. This is our Elevation 1, and this is a 14-inch deep module system here. If I populate this with our parts, shelves, populate it here like so, I can put in a shelf there, another adjustable shelf below, and let's put another adjustable shelf at the very top. Now, this is a 14-inch deep module system. I cannot put a hanging rod here. If I go into my accessories, rods, I'll put in a hanging rod, drop it in. Since they have a protrusion for my hanging rods, I cannot put a door here. It will interfere with the current hanging rod system. So if I delete this hanging rod, I can now put doors on the top and the bottom. I can go into my categories, parts, and the very bottom of parts, I can click on C door. Door connect between fixed shelves. I can left click drag it into place and drop it in. If I want to move it, so I haven't clicked anything on my mouse, I've got my plus button, I can kind of move it wherever I'd like using my mouse, or I can click on the F3 button on my keyboard. If I click on my F3 keyboard, it'll keep searching for the next available area where to put my door. I can click on F3 again, and now I can have that set in place where I would like it to be. So that's the first area where I would put a door, but again, this will work because I just have shelves. Let's throw in another module on this section right here. I'll go to my categories, modules, tall module, left click, drag it into place here. I see my magnet, go to my farthest left, drop it in. I'll drop this module in, right click, make this one 30 inches wide, click on okay and we'll drop it in. So this is a 14 inch deep system here. But instead, why don't we go back, edit this and make this greater. So then we can add a stand alone unit and have doors covering the inside carcass. I'm going to right click on the illustration, go into my attributes. Now this is the second way of how to do this. We could always edit our modules afterwards. I can right click on the illustration, go into my variables, and instead of making this 14 inches in depth, I'm gonna make this one 24 inches deep. We'll click on okay. And now my module is 24 inches deep. I know this works. If I take a look at my top view right here, I can see that it's 24 inches deep. Now I can go to my parts, grab my shelves, 
And for example, I can make this a long hang. Go to my categories, accessories, rods, left click, closet rod, drag it in. Now I have a long hang. Now what I can do is I can go into my categories, parts, underneath our parts, below cleats, below toe kicks, valences, at the very bottom. Again, I have C door, connect between fixed shelves. I'm gonna left click, drag it in to my current module that I've got placed. See my magnet, let go of my mouse. I'll click on F3 because I want this entirety. Left click once. And now I have a fully functioning standalone unit. Now, because this unit is standalone, keep in mind that if you make any walk in closets with a whole bunch of standalone units that's 24 inches deep, it's going to be costly because we're adding more material. It's now from 14 to 24 plus you're adding in doors, plus your hardware. So it does happen. It, people do want standalone units for their walk-in closet. They do want doors. Just keep in mind that more material is more money, less material is less money. Therefore, majority of the closets will be 14 inches deep. But this is the, the way how you wanna change it from having a standalone unit to a non-standalone standing unit, okay? The next, I think we only have time for just changing colors and profiles. So let's take care of that and we'll call it a day. Now to change colors and profiles, if we wanna do everything individually, we can. We've already shown you that. If you can right click on any item, you can right click on any item you want, follow the actual wizard and go into features and options. If we do that, we know that one item the shelf adjustable has been selected, and this is where we can change your colors. We can change your finishes from TFL to high gloss. We can change your TFL finish from our standard default white to one of our other colors. So this is your first way to change your colors and profiles individually. What I would recommend is to change everything and its majority all at once first. I'm gonna click on my items, and then my options. People will tend to go to global attributes or styles and pricings. This is specifically for kitchen catalogs. For our closet catalogs in 2020, we wanna click on our items, then our options. So I'm gonna click on our features and options like so. Now I'm going to click on global. I'm gonna let the program think and I want to select global and its entirety. I know that's been selected because if I move my dialog box, everything is highlighted in green. Now I can change all the colors and all the profiles all at once. Let's follow the rows below our dialog box. The first section here is we have finish. Underneath that category, we have finish TFL. And underneath that, we have our rods, finish, and options. Below that is our door and drawer profile, the finishes, and the pull options. So you will note that there are two different categories. We have one for our carcass, and then one specifically for our door and drawer profiles. Below the edge banding is our edge banding. We do not need to do anything with our edge band. Everything by default is all correct. So please ignore this portion. The only items that you want to change is your carcass and your door and drawer fronts. Let's go through every single row. First row is our finishes, TFL. If I click on our TFL, we have our subcategory and we have our colors. Let's pick Tobacco Halifax. I'll just choose that color for today. Now, just the carcass is now changed to Tobacco Halifax. The next line item is we have a rods, finish, and options. By default, everything has been selected as our closet oval rod chrome. The most popular by far and the most contemporary, you can change it to our round chrome rods, our round aluminum rods, and so forth. I'll keep at the oval chrome rods for now. Next line item is our door and drawer profile. By default, everything is our Euro flat slab. I can change it to our Brooklyn series. I can change it, for example, to our five-piece shaker or our five-piece glass shaker. Let's go ahead and change this to our five-piece glass shaker as an example. In our five-piece glass shaker, once I've selected that, we'll have new rows that populate. Underneath our glass piece shaker, now that we've selected this, the next item that populated was our inserts and decorative paneling. 
we have two different main options. We have our venesia line or our monocle line. Our venesia line is our glass line. Our monocle line is our 3D panels, which we'll talk about next week. In our venesia line, we can left click venesia to select that. Underneath that cord category, we can now choose the exact glass that we'd like. Underneath our venesia inserts, by default, we have our clear glass. We have different options such as our mirror, ice acid, ice acid mirror, and so forth. So you can go ahead and choose with the type of glass. Please note that this is a little bit of a cost. So I always recommend to select the item, go back into your cost and sell and find out what the exact cost is. Clear is gonna be your least expensive by far. I'm gonna pick on our old silver for now. Our next line item is we have the finishes for our door and drawer profiles. So right now we have a five piece glass shaker in our Venezia glass with our old silver. Now we wanna change the color for our door and drawer drawers. I'm gonna match it with our carcass. So I'm gonna to pick tobacco Halifax. So now our door and drawer profiles are now in tobacco Halifax. As I can see right here, I have tobacco Halifax here and tobacco Halifax below. Last but not least is our pull options. By default, everything is no handle. You can choose to buy one of our handles through us, through Hayfla USA or Hayfla Canada, or choose no handle and pick your own, okay? I'm gonna pick on our basic 32 millimeter chrome handle. And now I'm at the very end, we have accessory finishes. In our accessory finishes, we knew that our valet rods, we individually changed that to dark oil rub bronze, and we've chosen polished chrome for our pant racks. I'll leave that alone for now. And then we have edge banding below. We don't need to touch that whatsoever. We'll click on OK. Let the program think. We'll click on our presentation and in our perspective view. And now we can certainly take a look at a perspective view. Everything is now in tobacco Halifax. We've kept our valet rod as our oil rub bronze. We kept our pet rack at, at chrome, but please take a note of our doors. Our doors were old silver, but you can see that it's clear. 2020 did that on purpose so that you can see the carcass and what's inside the module systems. So even though it looks like it's clear on the render, please note that it is in old silver because that is what I selected. And that's the only note that you will need to make it for your end user, okay? That should be it for today. I know we did not cover islands and bench seating. However, you can view our past webinars. If you go into our dealer portal, go into our training section, go into our PFC 2020 closet webinars. I highly suggest clicking on our past webinars and our last week's session. And I believe that was February 16th. For those people that do want basic training, I highly recommend PFC webinar February 16th. This does cover our basic training from our wall modules and tall modules, when to use it. And this is a fantastic session. We've gotten a lot of feedback. This is probably one of our best level one sessions. So please view our February 16th webinar. As always, we will upload this one hour after our sessions. So you can view this at any time. If you want to individually train yourself on individual items, please click on our training section, go into our software. And in our software, we have our training videos. These are all our training videos individually. So how to individually add drag and drop parts, how to add accessories, how to actually set up your actual 2020 system, how to actually change your preferences and so forth. So these are all the tutorials on our closet catalog. And they're, they're all ranging from one minute to six minutes long. So this is gonna be your best friend. And this is where you're gonna find most of the information from. The last but not least is our weekly sessions. So every Tuesdays and every Thursdays, we will have our weekly session. It is an ongoing reoccurring meeting link with our same meeting password as 112233. Level one basics every Tuesdays. 
and level two tips and tricks and advanced training every Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific or one o'clock p.m. Eastern. Thank you very much once again, and we look forward to seeing you next week.